All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome in. So the fourth Jets training camp practice just wrapped up, and there are some positive, positive things to talk about, right? Some positive things to take away from this practice. Of course, with the overall understanding that it's the first week of training camp, they're practicing without pads, right? So in fact, pads come on Tuesday. So maybe a week from now, things change. Things look a little bit different. But with that said, we have to just take what we can. And positive news is always, always, always better than negative news, okay? So the first thing that I want to start with is the fact that Dwayne Brown actually got put on the physically unable to perform list, the PUP list. In other words, he's not going to be practicing. Now, granted, he can come off at any time, but when I'm thinking about, you know, the future at left tackle for this season, who's going to be named the starter, we've seen Billy Turner get some get some uh, first team opportunities here in the early parts of training camp. Again, no pads. But where does Mikai Becton factor into this? Because Becton's not on the list. He can practice. He has been going with the twos as of late, protecting Zach Wilson. If I put myself in Mikai's shoes, I am looking at the situation like I have to grasp this. I have to capitalize on this app on this opportunity. I mean, all the talk offseason about, you know, him coming back, the rehab process, uh, him coming back and looking slimmer as well kind of, I don't want to say going back and forth with Coach Sala, but um, essentially saying that he wants to be on the left side, he is a left tackle, and that the right side might not be uh, super beneficial to his lower half because of the injuries over the past two seasons, he now has an opportunity to where the guy that was expected to be the starting left tackle, Dwayne Brown, is not practicing. If I am Makai Becton, I am capitalizing on this opportunity. Of course, you actually have, you actually have to go out there and execute against a really good defensive line. Tons of edge rushers all over the place. But for Makai Becton, he has to seize this opportunity, right? If he could go out there, make plays, instill confidence in the coaching staff, instill confidence in Aaron Rodgers, that he does have his blind side locked down, I think that could give Becton a leg up as we progress throughout training camp. Now, it's not to say that Dwayne Brown can't come back really, you know, relatively soon and instantly win the job or take the job back. But again, if you're Makai Becton and you're in a positional battle here, who's going to be the team's starting left tackle and he's in the mix and he thinks he is the team's left tackle, go out and win the job. The opportunity is there. All right, so shifting gears and talking about Aaron Rodgers for a second. Uh, according to multiple reporters... Rodgers was dominant again, dominant again, spreading the football around, showing off his mobility, having numerous wow plays, wow throws, right? Garrett Wilson, Tyler Conklin, uh, supposedly there was this incredible play at the end of practice where Rodgers, uh, again, showed off his mobility and found Wilson. Wilson made a sweet grab in the, uh, in the back of the end zone where he managed to keep his feet in bounds. It was just, it was kind of like an off script type of play. And what's really awesome is the fact that, yeah, of course we know Aaron Rodgers, the, fir the future first ballot Hall of Famer. Of course we know Garrett Wilson, top 10 pick, rookie of the year, great numbers considering the quarterback play last season and also weapons around him. We as fans can all assume, okay, those two guys are going to have a good connection, but until we see it on the field, it is just a hope. But the fact that Rodgers and Garrett have been not only just making plays in practice, but off the field, they seem really tight. We've heard quotes from Aaron Rodgers comparing him to Devontae Adams. I'm not expecting him to instantly become Devontae Adams, obviously. Arguably the best receiver in football. But to hear these comments from Rodgers, to see the connection growing, and really, for me at least, build every single day. Right? Can you get one, two percent better every single practice? Whether it's you know an on-field connection, whether it's better communication, whether it's off the field continuity, just those two guys getting more comfortable with each other is going to bode well. Yes, of course, I love Alan Lazard. We're keeping Corey Davis, traded Denzel Mims. We have Jason Brownlee emerging onto the scene. Um, gonna talk about him in a second. But Garrett Wilson to me is the clear cut number one option at wide receiver on this roster he will be the focal point of the offense here it just gets fans super excited right thinking about the trifecta between rogers wilson and oc hackett 
right? Because Hackett coached Devontae Adams. And, you know, if we think back, Devontae Adams wasn't a top five pick. He wasn't a top 10 pick. He wasn't as heralded as Garrett Wilson coming out of college. You know, Adams came in working with Derek Carr from Fresno State. Granted, great college receiver, but he was a t- high end second round pick. He did, nobody, not many people thought that Adams was going to turn into what he is today. And Hackett was there in Green Bay working directly with Adams. He knows what good wide receiver play looks like. He knows how how hard that guy works. And Rodgers knows that too. The three of those guys working together to get on the same page, to find out the strengths and the weaknesses. What do I do well? What do I not do well? Uh, Where can we really expose a defense? Uh, Things like that. Just getting again, one to 2% better every single day between the three of them to me is absolutely paramount for offensive success this season. In fact, Connor Hughes actually had a really awesome quote. I, I just remember smiling when I was reading it. It was that he's been covering the team since I believe it was 2014 and he has not seen this level of quarterback play. Again, I don't want to get too ahead of myself here. It's the first week of training camp practices and no pads, but to, to see the reaction from not only just reporters there, but from the coaches, from the fans in attendance. I mean, this whole culture change, this whole thing about, you know, Rodgers being like Tom Brady for the Jets, right? Brady comes into Tampa Bay instantly, instantly. I felt like overnight, I, I lived down here in Tampa Bay. And I remember when that trade went down, it almost seemed like the following week, things were different in Tampa. And granted, I know it's early, but right now it does seem like it's that same type of effect taking place with the Jets, and uh, it just gets me fired up. Now, looking at the defense side of the football, it wasn't just an offensive, you know, firework show. Quinny Williams continues to make plays. He had two would-be sacks uh, yesterday if pads were on. He's now stacking on top of that practice with another really, really good practice today. We can also look at Jermaine Johnson, who uh, I guess at two, at two points in practice made two terrific plays. Zach Rosenblatt actually said that Jermaine Johnson was uh, dominant today definitely the best day of camp and you know for, much like Garrett Wilson former first round pick high expectations high ceiling second year in the Sala system playmakers around the defensive line it's not like offenses can just you know focus in and double and take Jermaine away he's going to have tons of one-on-one opportunities just thinking about the depth um the Jets are right there, right there in the top of the NFL as far as edge rusher depth. It's um, and when you think about a four three system that Salah runs, you of course you have to have the depth, you have to have the talent, you have to have the production there. But instead of it being just a pipe dream or like, okay, we're going to need like an off season or two to really replenish the defensive line, uh, like like we first saw, you know, when Salah first came in, swapping from the three four traditional style that the Jets have ran uh, for years on end to the four three. There's always going to be that transition in place and vice versa. You know, if you're going from an ineffective 4-3 defense, you got a new coaching staff coming in or, you know, at least a new defensive coordinator and you're swapping to more of a 3-4 style, you're going to have a transition, right? You're going to have to move pieces away. You're going to have to add guys that fit the system. And um, it it really seems like we're, we're peaking on the defensive line with just talent all over, specifically at edge. And last but not least, Jason Brownlee turning heads once again, according to multiple reporters, according to players on the team, according to coaches, there, and even according to Southern Miss uh, reporters, he is a good player. Brownlee's one of these guys that once preseason hits, right, like the Hall of Fame game and whatnot next week, these are the moments where Brownlee can really separate himself, or, or not, not so much separate himself, but I, I guess the better uh, wording would be cement himself on the squad on the 53-man squad you know for hit for the Jets to to uh trade away Denzel Mims that early in training camp right we're not waiting until two weeks in a preseason maybe uh, a wide receiver goes down with an injury now Mims value goes up they part of ways with them pretty much immediately it was either later that night or the following day they moved Mims 
to the Detroit Lions, multiple teams were calling, right? So in, because the Jets did that, we obviously have an open slot here. Uh, one position is up for the taking. I, I feel like five guys are pretty much locked in to, to be on the 53, but who's going to be that sixth guy? Brownlee, ha, up to this point, has shown a great work ethic. He's been making plays and practices. Aaron Rodgers seems to really be feeding him a lot of information, working with him one-on-one, -on -one, uh, talking to him a lot. That's really, really cool. And of course, we could factor in uh, Brownlee's college resume, a lot of production. Physically, he's all there. Uh, supposedly, he made an incredible like one-handed play, uh, I believe it was yesterday in practice. So, I, I mean, this is the undrafted free agent. Uh, th this is going to be one of those cool things to watch on like Hard Knocks and One Jets Drive, right? The story of Jason Brownlee. Hopefully, it's covered. I, I know Hard Knocks doesn't really, you know, they don't cover everything. Um, but, you know, hopefully he's talked about. It. Hopefully they put a spotlight on him because uh, I think up to this point, he, he definitely deserves it. So I'll leave it there. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, go Jets.